Hello and welcome, I'm Nate 42 and in this episode I'm going to talk about some plugins that I have in Octoprint. So right now I am currently printing something, it's a very long print, it's going to take, uh, well this one's not too long actually, it's going to take about 4 hours or whatever. Um, this is my Octoprint, if you wanted to, me to go over anything for uh, Octoprint, uh, then leave me a comment in the section below and I will read that and uh potentially i could create a video on that as well so let's start off so we have the the login and everything like that i've got these tabs up here i do have one time lapse and octolapse uh i also have webcam streamer i don't actually have that set up just yet and slicer as well so slicer is a uh i think i believe that's a third party slicer which allows you to slice things better although it might not actually be a third party slicer not 100% sure now, now that I come to think about it. Um, but yeah, we'll go to Octolapse. So Octolapse is one of the plugins that we use on here. Uh, it's a very, very good uh, time-lapsing um, thing. It allows you, uh, if, you're, if you're using this plugin, you want to turn time-lapsing off. Um, but it does record stuff into the same area. So if you are, uh, doing time lapses on here, you want to do by date. You can just download the latest uh, prints. It will tell you there as well if it's failed. So if you cut the print short, it will say failed and it will um, it will be very noticeable that that's probably not the print that you was uh, looking for from the library of prints that you were doing. Um, so yeah, in Octolapse, it just does, it does an, uh, a time lapse. You can change some settings. You can say what your printer is. Um, you can say what stabilization will it be, blah, blah, blah. It will move the head to a certain position and then it will do the snapshot on layer change. And you can actually change that. You can change the rendering so it's 60 frames per second, 30 frames per second, blah, blah, blah. It's really good. It does give you a couple extra things down here. It tells you how much filament's been extruded, I guess. Um, and also XYZ stuff, blah, blah, blah. Layer hop. You can turn it off up here as well if you don't want to use it for certain things. Uh, and you can use the uh, Octo cam with it, or you can use like a USB camera instead, if that's what you prefer. Now, let's go into options. There's a few other things on here that I want to talk about as well. So if we go down to uh, the plugins down here, I do have a cost plugin. This cost plugin allows you to change the currency. It tells you how much it costs per hour uh, for prints. Uh, you can also do per her length or weight if you wanted to so i just kind of put in the the average price of a spool that i get i guess um and then it will do eight cents uh eight pence even per meter uh plus the 18 pence per hour add that all together and it will give you the cost and the cost will actually show up down here so the whatever i'm printing right now will cost one pound 44 if i was to go into uh i don't know went to house if I was to go into the top one, it will say last print time was nine hours, 52 minutes. It cost two pounds 28, uh, which I'm not sure if that is exactly how much it did cost or not. Um, I probably could pump out uh, more. Uh, yeah, I probably could. It probably is about right, I guess. I'm not 100% sure if it is. I haven't double checked it with another calculator or anything like that, but from what it seems, it does seem correct. And then if you go down to this one as well, it will do the same here. So £2.68, 12 hours of print time. It does kind of make sense. So back to here, we do have the standard plugins as well. So there's the, I believe that's a uh, standard plugin as well as Cura Engine 15.04, which is very, very uh, outdated. <laughs> I guess I don't know why they still have this on here and why they don't have I don't know like uh, either the latest cure which is like version 3 or whatever it is or like slicer just like built in because it would make so much more sense to, to have those on there because you I, I find it hard to even get settings through this kind of cure anymore so um, yeah you have to find a profile for uh, a thing that you probably don't even that, that you can't even really get anymore but there we go uh firmware updater it's very useful to have this especially because you can download the file and you can update 
your firmware when required um, through this. Uh, I have done a separate video on that if you just uh, look it up. Maybe I'll post it in the description below. But yeah, I do tell you how to do the firmware update for the printer through Octoprint. So you don't have to unplug your printer. You don't have to unplug, you know, the the Pi from your printer, then uh, plug that into your computer, move it across the room, or bring a laptop, you know, all that kind of stuff. It, it takes the hassle out of it, which is really nice. And you can also do it from OL, so you don't even have to download the file really. You can just update it straight from a web address if you really wanted to with the other settings that you get here ABR dude, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Uh, auto print, uh, auto lapse, even, sorry, uh, has some extra settings here. Webcam streamer plugin has some extra settings here. I've not configured any of this yet. Uh, I have been considering doing uh, a probably like a YouTube live stream of my printer. Um, I was going to do that when I got the enclosure. I do now have the enclosure. There's a few things that I want to do to the enclosure just to make it uh, more user friendly for me, I guess, and for other people. You know, like embedding cables, uh, making sure that they are routed correctly so that, that no cables will hang down from the top of it, all that kind of crap. Um, but yeah, once I get all that stuff done, maybe I'll set up the web stream here so that it actually does work. Um, then we'll go on to the plugin manager. So display ETA, this is a very useful plugin actually. It does show on your screen now um, the ETA that is shown on the website. It will say like accurate time and then it will say the time that it will actually be finished and it will say how long it has left. Um, and it gets that from here. I was quite confused at first because like, well, how does it know what time it is to, to, to know like what time it's going to finish? But that's because it's just being sent from Octoprint. It's not because like your printer knows the time or anything like that. These ones are now like standard built-in ones. We've got Octolapse there again. These are all standard ones. Back up and restore. It'd be useful to use that, I guess. I probably should have used that at some point. Detail progress plugin. This allows you to see the progress on the screen as, as well. I'm not sure if I should have that one and the other one installed, but I, I do. Um, Discovery allows you to find it through Bonjour um, and Universal Plug and Play. Um, I I don't really discover it that way, I just go to the local IP address. So yeah, I don't know uh, if that's even useful for me to be honest. Uh, but I can't turn it off, so you know, it's there. Uh, <laughs> Pi support plugin, that's this thing down here, that's a, that's a new part actually, I, I, that's uh, coming more recently. Um, slicer, this is actually a, the GUI based slicer. I That slicer was a GUI one, that was a third party one. Um, virtual printer webcam streamer plugin. Webcam streamer plugin was this one, which allows you to stream directly to YouTube or to Twitch. I, I mean, I wish there was just like a, a way to get uh, Prusa Control slicer directly on here. Like that would that would be so good because Prusa Control like very rarely ever messes up for me. I could just upload a file to the printer, click, you know, print, and then it will just convert that STL file into a print and print. That would be uh, really the next kind of thing that you need to happen with 3D printing is to, is to have that seamless kind of one click print that you uh, that you're really hoping for but anyway I'll stop rambling about that Pi support this one here I mean this is a standard one this is not really anything special uh, this is one that comes with your printers after, after you've installed it sorry it says please restart what to print after changing any of the plugin settings uh, so this is the one that tells you if you're under or over voltage under voltage or overheating sorry um, so it will tell you if your CPU or the GPU on your Raspberry Pi is too hot and it will tell you if it's overpowered or uh, underpowered sorry so if you hover over this bit here if it's black I think that means it's okay but I'm not 100% sure now <laughs> I'm starting to, to worry a bit about that but I, I think it's fine uh, I've had it red before when I had the light plugged in the light's no longer plugged in directly to the Raspberry Pi, so I think it's okay. Under voltage, make sure you power supply and cabling are probably not supposed to Pi. If you see that other one, frequently capping due to overheating, improved cooling of the CPU, GPU. Um, click the symbol for more information. Um, oh, let's just say it's a different website. We don't need that information right now. But as long as it's not red I th or, or has that, as long as it's not one of these top two symbols, then I think it's okay. So 
that is about it for this episode. It's gone on a little longer than I expected it to actually. So um, yeah, don't forget to leave a comment or a like in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next video.